All right, guys, so first step in this project is going to be to cut our lumber. So our two by two by eight pieces that we have, we have the seven pieces right there. And uh, we're gonna cut them in four foot length. So super simple stuff. Uh, grab a measuring tape. Make sure all of your pieces are perfectly aligned. And if you want to confirm that they're all the same length, you can go to the other end as well and, and check if they're aligned properly. Normally, these, uh, these mills have professional equipment. It's never really an issue, but it's always good to double check. In this case, they're fine. So just squeeze all that wood together. Grab out, grab out your tape. And we're just going to go to the 48 inch line, which is right here. So we're going to mark our piece here. And we're going to mark the other pieces as well while we're here. So, so mark all your pieces. So we're basically making one long line. Uh, so we can make one cut. You don't have to do it this way. It's faster. It saves time uh, Again, just make sure your pieces are properly aligned at the beginning if you do that Then you can actually confidently cut there and know you're gonna get four foot long pieces I'm using a one hand circular saw with a I think it's a four inch blade uh, You can use a regular saw if you want if you're doing it on the ground like I am obviously make sure your blade it's not going to go deep enough that it's going to hit the concrete there because it's going to be pretty bad for your blade there. So let's go. All right, so we have our pieces of four foot long we can set that aside for now and that's going to complete step one so simple stuff anyone can do this and your lumber is ready to rock all right so step number two you're going to need a sharpie pen you're going to need a measuring tape i'm using this by the way because i can't find my regular uh measuring tapes we're reshuffling all kinds of stuff and preparing for the farm so my wife was nice enough to <laughs> give me hers uh so yeah so we're gonna grab this now what you're going to do here is measure a one foot long section. So that's going to be 12 inches right here. And then we're going to leave a gap of two inches. So at the 14 inch mark, we're going to make another mark here. Then from 14 all the way to 26. So that's another foot or you could just actually bring your tape here and measure out another 12 inches. So that's going to be the distance between our gutters and that's going to be where we screw the lateral pieces. So same exercise here. We're going to measure out a two inches and then we're going to go to the 14 inch line, which is right here. And then we're going to measure another two inches here. So for another one of our supports and that's it. So if you've done things properly, you should be left with exactly six inches here, which is what we have. So good, that's done. Repeat on all of the four beams. So two for this side, two for the other side, and that's how it's done. All right, so step number three, we're going to assemble both sides of the frame. So they're going to be basically like ladders. So what we're gonna do is take our two pieces of wood that we've actually marked in the previous step, we're going to separate them out about four feet because that's the length of the uh, of the piece of lumber we're going to screw right in between. So grab your four foot pieces that we've cut in step one. And then you can come here. Now I know some of you guys are going to tell me I've actually left two inch markings here and the wood is two by twos, but for some reason it seems to be smaller. One thing you need to learn about lumber is that it, it never has the size uh, that they claim it does when it sells. So a two by three by eight, like I use on the farm, is never two by three by eight. It's most likely 1.75 by uh, 2.75. So I have no idea. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments why the lumber industry does this, but yeah. So don't freak out if you're just falling right in the middle, just get in the center of those two marks and you'll be good. One thing I recommend doing when you're uh, 
doing stuff like this is first of all start with one piece only so these two pieces there are just going to man confuse us a little bit for now so we're just going to get the general shape going set these two guys aside for now if you have an impact driver i suggest you get that there's less chances you're going to split the wood so that is uh construction or carpentry related but yeah an impact driver is a better tool so we're going to grab some screws here in this case we're just going to need two to get started I also recommend you get something that you know has a 90 degree angle to it. So there are tools for that. I don't have access to all my tools right now. So, but lucky for me and for us, there's a lot of items in everyday life that have a 90 degree angle. We know it's got a 90 degree angle. So we're just going to fit our piece of wood here, put our 90 degrees right in the corner. So that's good. We're going to grab a screw. All right. I'm pushing down on the beam with my knee, by the way, just so it doesn't move. So this impact has three speeds, quite obviously on speed one, it's not going in. Here we go. Here we go. So our first piece is in. We're gonna do the same thing with the other two pieces. Again, same thing here. Grab your 90 degrees. The noise you're hearing, by the way, not stripping the screw, it's just the impact. That's what it does. So it gives impact in order to help the screw go in. All right, so we've got our first piece. This is basically going to be one side of your A-frame. So we can set that aside for now, and we're gonna repeat the same step, but with the uh, other pieces, and that's going to complete this step. All right, so we've got the two uh, pieces of the two ladders ready behind me. We're gonna grab three of the four pieces that are left. And uh, what we're gonna do now is cut the actual supports that go like this. So, uh, so you're gonna grab your measuring tape. You're gonna grab your Sharpie. And then, so one of those pieces actually gets cut like right down in the middle. So you should have two feet, so 24 inches. Let's just mark that down right here. So 24 inch mark is gonna be here. The other two pieces we're going to cut at 2.8 feet. So 2.8 feet uh, is going to be 32 inches. So we're going to cut them here. And that's also valid for the one right underneath here. So measure out one foot, two inches from whatever is left on those two pieces here. So one foot, two inches puts us at 14 inches. So 14 inches is right there. For those two pieces and you can get rid of uh, when you cut these two little pieces here you can get rid of that so i'm just going to cut those and i'll be right back all right so our pieces are cut we're just going to set them aside for now and this completes the step all right so next step is going to be to assemble the hinges on our um, on our two sides of the frame so in order to do that grab our hinges you guys remember from the other video so i'm pushing stuff aside because i need eight foot wide uh, in terms of space and uh, the garage is pretty much 10 feet wide and there's stuff uh, that's already in here so, so these two pieces face one another so they're facing one another here we're gonna grab our hinges and we're gonna grab our shorter screws that we got at the hardware store the other day We're gonna screw in the other one. I'll spare you guys uh, that part because it's pretty obvious it's the same thing as what we've done before anyway. All right, so our hinges are in. Now at this stage, what you wanna do is put it on its feet. So normally you should be able to flip it if you follow the instructions like this. And then it flips like this, and then we can just grab it. It's starting to actually look like a frame. So we're gonna screw in, uh, screw in our gutter supports in order to get the right width at the bottom and to get ourselves a guide uh, that it's gonna help us uh, finish the rest of the screwing. 
we're actually going to allow four inches on the top level here another four inches on the other side so if you're measuring four inches on both sides then you've got the right width so what you're going to do is put those two screws in and we're going to lock that structure this way so this way everything else is going to follow after that so, all right so we've screwed in our top lateral support on this side and we've also done that on this side so what this does is it provides support for the gutters but at this point what it does is it locks the structure so already you can see it's a lot more uh it's a lot more stable what we're going to do is do the same thing screw those uh, pieces that we had uh, in the previous steps here and then here again and we're going to do that on both sides and then at that point we'll be ready to put our gutters on right so same thing goes for the bottom supports here all of our supports are in uh gutter supports are in as well we pretty much have a frame at this point so uh all that's left to do is to fit it with the gutters which is our next and almost final step all right so this step requires that we cut our gutters in five foot sections which mean in half uh so i've got a measuring tape uh that's actually five feet long exactly so we're just gonna grab sharpie pen and we're gonna mark our gutters easier to cut them if you flip them around and so from one end all right so the five feet mark actually happens to be right here so we're just gonna grab our sharpie give it a line here and then because my gutters are all pushed against the same surface which is the railing of my deck then we can just actually line them up and make our three lines right away so one line here now mind you, these are gutters that were used in the past, as you guys may know. I have gutters everywhere. I've got some at the farm. I've got maybe 200 here at home that I use for running various tests. So, in order to cut that, I'm using a portable or a mini circular saw from the wall. You can use anything you want in terms of circular saws. Just one thing when you're cutting gutters, because they're made of PVC, because you don't want them to shatter, you're going to fully spin the blade before it makes contact with the gutters. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough speed and you're going to be uh, ripping chunks out of the PVC. So if you've got uh, aluminum gutters, then get yourself a metal blade of some sort or metal snips. You can do that manually. So here we go. I'll show you guys the first cut. All right, so we're just like one or two millimeters off that line, but it's fine. As long as you go slowly and you have a blade that is fully spinning, your gutters will not shatter. So obviously that's done here. We're just gonna turn it around. Fully spin our blade first. Here we go, that's cut. And we're just gonna turn it around and give it its final cut and we'll be good. See, I've actually shattered a corner, but it's actually 18 Fahrenheit here, so it's below freezing. So that's it. Repeat the same thing with your three gutters, and that's going to be good for that step. You can set these aside. We're going to assemble them uh, later on. All right, so now that we have our frame almost complete, well, actually, the frame is complete, but we're just going to fit the gutters on. So grab your gutters. Grab yourself a measuring tape. From each end, you're going to mark at 18 inches so that's put that puts us right here and then at 18 inches so that's going to put us right here and what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a drill grab yourself a bit that is big enough so that your zip ties uh, that we've got in our materials list can actually go through the hole so drill our mark is here now we're going to go closer to the bottom of the gutter than the top because our supports are pretty low and we don't want the gutters the uh, zip ties to have to go uh, around in such a way that there's too much loose around or too much of the zip tie that's not in contact with anything so i'm going to drill it and i'll bring it closer to the camera so you guys can see it so i've got 
one hole drilled. I'm going to drill my second hole here. There we go. So you guys can see here, I've drilled, I'll just remove that, so a hole here, a hole here. So the zip tie is going to go in here, around the beam over there, and then come here and we're going to tie it. We're going to do the, the other uh, side as well. So I'm going to do the six gutters and I'll be right back with that finished result. All right, so that, that's what it looks like once it's actually um, tied up or fastened. Uh, you can screw them, uh, you can actually tighten them a little bit more than I did. Uh, but really the point is to prevent the gutter from coming off the system like this. So uh, same thing here. So you guys can see, forgive me for these dirty gutters, I just actually pulled them out from uh, under my deck uh, outside and they've been used in the past. So, but yeah, that gives you an idea. So two holes, pass the gutter, the zip tie through, and then around the beam, just don't over tighten. If you do, the gutter is going to lift like this. Uh, and anyway, once you fill it with soil and it's wet with water and, and it's got some weight in it, it's just gonna sit there. It's really to prevent it from coming off the system. As you can see, this is actually pretty sturdy. So, so yeah, that's gonna do the job. We're gonna finish off with the other five gutters and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so it looks like we've got a finished frame. Let me just get the camera off the tripod so I can actually show you guys around a little all right so here we go like i told you guys before our zip ties are in so two holes pass your zip tie through now the, the two holes are about an inch and a half apart so remember our beams are not exactly two inches so uh, one and three quarter inches between the holes is going to be perfect hinges here so we can actually fold it and look at that so i've got a couple of end caps which i bought uh, for another system so i'm going to put them on and show you guys all right so that's it we've got end caps on this side so one more benefit of the end caps is they force the gutter to keep its shape or to retain its shape so these guys were actually crushed under a bunch of other gutters but just putting the caps on actually opened them up pretty good so that's it now these uh Channels are going to get cleaned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this system on a trailer. I'm going to bring it to the farm and then uh, I'll be growing in it all season. So make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be putting out all kinds of videos about what you can do with these and what you can achieve, what you can grow, best practices and whatnot. So again, my name is Khaled. You guys know me as a plant charmer. I enjoyed making this video for you guys. I hope a lot of you guys build this system and we're going to have a great season together. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep it green.